I'm Eloy Macedo, speaking to you from EloyMacedo.com. Who is Eloy Macedo and Think Personal Branding? The date is uh, May 13th, 2018. Time right now is 12.31. Um, okay, this is a Ask Eloy, Med Ask Eloy Macedo uh, kind of video. Um, I have many WhatsApp groups and sometimes people do ask me questions. So I just thought, I'll, you know, some, some of the questions that people have asked me and I'll answer them. You can check the question and the timing at the description box below so that you can get the more or less the right time for when the question is about to start. Okay, so let's quickly move on. The first one is from Amal Das from Kerala. Okay, God's own country. So my question is, if you're not interested in party life, spending kind of lifestyle, why are you making lots of money? Why am I making lots of money? Because expenses keep rolling. Um, there's never a day where the you know expense meter shuts off. Uh, I need to plan out because I have a baby that's coming up. Uh, maybe I'll have an accident tomorrow. I'll be hospitalized. Maybe I'd want to take a six month holiday. Uh, maybe I'll have to, you know, there are so many things. Maybe I'd want to do a course. Maybe I want to buy a new microphone or the new iMac. Uh, so expenses never stop, needs never stop. Now I'm planning for my new house, uh, for me and my wife, we need to, uh, you know, get the land leveled, we need to build the house, I need to plan out, so many other things are there. So, uh, you know, if I had around 10 million US dollars, then I wouldn't bother, then I'd be just a sannyasi, you know, the, a kind of a guru, but then I don't have 10 million dollars in the bank. Um, he also says uh, that is Amal Das, you don't even have a luxury car or house. Well, I don't need it because I'm staying in a forest. And you don't invest your money in any business. Uh, I have investments here and there, very small ones, but I don't want to invest too much. And other uh, other stuff. So why are you making money? It's survival, my dear friend. Like, uh, for example, last year when I did my bariatric surgery, I never planned it out. It just happened and I ended up spending 10,000 US dollars and it went out just within one week. So expenses can come at any point of time. I invested in a gym. I lost, uh, I spent $5,000 for that. Um, you know, there are so many things that come up. So you need money. You need money to survive. So I hope, I hope that makes you understand. And I'm not kind of giving you this, uh, I hope I'm not giving you this, this feeling that money is not important. Money is very, very important. So this was from Amal Das. Okay, let me just put the timestamp so I know. Okay, the next one from Rohan Sheri, who's from Bangalore, Bangalore, yeah, Bangalore it used to be called, okay. Anyway, how do you grow a strong mindset? Okay, um, how do you grow a strong mindset is exactly the same way how you grow strong muscles. It's uh, when you have, uh, uh, when you have resistance, that's where you build muscle. Let's say, for example, I try to do push-ups. I've never done push-ups. I can do only one. If I want to do 10, it's hard. So every day I do one, 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 then goes to two, then it goes to three. Same way how you build muscles in the gym, you do it slow and steady. How you gain a new skill, you learn karate every single day until you become good. How you develop a strong mindset is not by sitting in the house, by being around with your friends, is by going out there into the real world, working, taking pressure, living by yourself, paying your own bills, being your own man. That's how you get into a strong mindset. As long as you're staying with your parents, you're never going to get a strong mindset. Go out there, struggle, sleep on the streets, work. Uh, even if you have to take a job as a uh, you know, cleaner, as a shopkeeper, whatever. That's how you become tough and strong. When you sleep on the floor, when you don't have AC, when you don't have food to eat and you need to think about tomorrow, that's how you become strong. Next question by Ron Shetty is, who is your inspiration? My inspiration is myself. I don't look at anyone for inspiration. Nobody inspires me. You can show me a video of a guy with one hand, one leg or whatever. It doesn't inspire me because they're doing whatever they need to do to survive. I need to do whatever I need to do to survive. I've been on the brink of suicide. So nobody inspires me. It's me getting up in the morning knowing what am I supposed to do. And today I have a wife, I have a baby coming up. I think that's inspiration enough. As you grow up, you wouldn't need to look at Elon Musk, Tim Ferriss, Tony Robbins, nobody. You look at yourself and say, I have responsibilities. That's about it. Uh, next question by Ron Shetty is your future goals. I take one day at a time. Every day is a new day. Every day I need to make money. Every day I need to enjoy myself. Every day I need to make sure my wife is kept happy, uh, that I'm living life to the fullest. That's my future goal. One day at a time, enjoy each day to the fullest and be happy. So that's Ron Shetty from Bengal Ruru. Okay, I hope I got that right. 
Next one, uh, let me put a timestamp, and that is one minute. Let me just put it. Okay, uh, this is by Ayush Tomar, a 20 year old boy from New Delhi. You're not a boy, you're a man. 20 year old young man from New Delhi. Gil White, sir. Yes, sir. How can a person develop discipline in his life by himself alone? You know, when you're hungry, when you don't have food to eat, you'd work. When you don't have a place to stay, you'd you know be uncomfortable and then you'd work hard to get a place to stay. When you suffer, you you know you don't enjoy the luxury. If if for example your mom and dad are paying the bills, you have a nice AC in the house, you have a comfortable bed and everything is nice, you're not going to be disciplined. But when you suffer, when there's no food to eat, when you're hungry, when you have to do something, automatically you will develop discipline. The reason you're asking this question is because your parents are paying the bill, you're comfortable, you're staying in a nice house, you don't have to pay your bills, you don't have to worry about anything. Discipline comes when you suffer. Okay, even me, given a choice, I love to be lazy, I love to play the game the whole day. Why am I making this video? Is because I'm planning out, you know, oh, expenses are coming. Uh, this is next. My wife is going to get a baby. Need to take it to the hospital. Need to take care of, you know, bills that are coming up. So that's how you get disciplined. Like, how can I wake up uh, by myself? Don't worry. Give yourself time. As you grow up, you'll get the answers to this. Okay, I got a couple of questions, uh, 10 questions from people I do not know. So I'll just randomly shoot them. Uh, people have, uh, I don't know, they didn't want their names to be known. So I'm just answering this. Okay, how much sleep is enough, according to me? Uh, I personally, I feel eight hours of sleep is enough. But there are some people who are happy with six hours of sleep, some people who need 12 hours of sleep. If you're a young growing up man, you need more time to sleep. If you have an active lifestyle, let's say you exercise, you need more sleep. If you're injured or you're under tremendous stress, you need more sleep. Some people, when they are under stress, they sleep more. Some people, when they are under stress, they sleep less. It's different for different people. Standard is eight hours. You need to figure out how much sleep is enough for you. So time it out, have a journal, uh, make journal entries, and you'll figure out how much sleep you need for yourself, okay? So there's no one size fits all. Uh, I, for one, I just go to sleep. When I have to wake up, I wake up. And if I feel sleepy in between, I go to sleep because my work is creative. I need to always keep putting content and study and learn. So for me, sleep is, you know, I just take it as it comes. So next question, uh, this one, let me put a timestamp. Uh, one minute, uh, timestamp, okay. The one best skill that will help you in your successful work. One best skill. I would say, the one skill that is the most important in the world is making money because at the end of the day, we're all trying to make money. So if you can make money, that's the greatest skill in the world. And if you, let's say, you have 10 million in the bank or 100 million, you don't have to worry about anything. So the one skill that is the best skill in the world is make money. It can be anything. Have a skill that helps you make money. Okay, next question that is eight. Uh, let me put the timestamp, guys. Okay, what's my opinion on meditation? Meditation is very necessary because today we are bombarded with so many messages from your iPhone, from your iPad, from the internet, from friends, from people, from ads. I think meditation is a process by which you can switch off and you can focus on nothingness, emptiness, and when you, it's like resetting a system. I feel meditation is very important. I meditate at least once to two times a day. I think it quietens my mind and gives me the focus that I need. Otherwise, I'm constantly distracted. Okay, next question. Let me put a timestamp. Um, if someone doesn't want to do business and a job, is there anything he or she can do to earn a hefty amount of money? Um, there is no free lunch. So if you don't want to work, um, you need to do a business. If you don't want to do business, then you're talking of begging. If you don't want to do begging, well, uh, why don't you offer a service? and you don't want to do anything and you just want to earn money, have a rich daddy or become someone's, uh, you know, uh, sugar babe or offers your, offer your body for sale. There is no free money on this planet. So if you're looking at free money, nothing. Even I offer a service, even I put videos, even I put articles, there's no free lunch, my dear friend. So if you're looking for free lunch, there's no such thing. Okay, or, you know, just hope that your parents give you uh, their property. Okay, how do you use social media productively? Um, you need to have content. People are constantly searching for content that is entertaining, content that is thought-provoking, content that is creative and adds value to them. So if you can give them something of value, whether it's entertainment, whether it's information, whether it's something useful, 
then people will tune into you, then people will listen to you. So if you can come out with something like this consistently, every day, at least a little bit, and you keep it engaging, then social media proves to be useful. But if you're just randomly doing it just for the hell of it, uh, you know, it doesn't work. And you also need to have measurable parameters. Like for example, are you doing it for fame? Some people want to do it for fame. Some people want to do it for money. Then you need to know how to convert it to your sales funnel. Some people are just doing it just for a hobby. So ask yourself, what are the measurables? So if it is fame, you need to know how many views that you had yesterday or how many subscribers you had yesterday. How many do you have today? Uh, what is your target for tomorrow? You need to have a sensible plan of action. And if it is sales, then you need to have the measurables as to what is the revenue that you made yesterday, what is the revenue that you're making today. For me, it's not about fame because fame doesn't feed my, pay my bills. I'm looking at customers. So even if I have 10 subscribers, at least 50% should be willing to pay me. That's great. 80% great. Uh, if I have 1 million followers and nobody's paying me any money, it's no use. Okay. So have your measurables in place. Next one. Um, uh, how to handle loneliness and difficult times keep yourself busy if you're busy if you're working if you're constantly doing something or another you do not have time for loneliness uh, ask a person who's hungry ask a person sleeping on the streets ask a person who's suffering do you feel lonely no because the pain reminds them they need to do something so uh, I'm always busy I'm always doing something or another I don't have time to be lonely um, next question let me put the timestamp again uh, one second best city in the world whichever city you know uh, takes care of your needs best country whichever country takes care of your needs best culture whichever culture suits your lifestyle uh, there is no some people love to be in saudi because they like the strictness they like the fact that they have to pray some people like to be in germany where you can sleep naked on the beach and everyone's walking naked and france so some people like it in Thailand where there is sun and everything is cheap. Some people like in Dubai where everything is modern. So there is no best city, country, culture. If you're asking me personally, for me, the best city in the world is where nobody is interfering in your business. Best country in the world is where you're allowed to do what you want. And best culture in the world is one that minds their own business. For me, right now, the best city in the world is Samui. Best country in the world is Thailand uh, because nobody knows me. And best culture in the world is this culture because I can do whatever I like. Okay, the next one, let me put a timestamp once again. Uh, how do we consistent in hard times? Uh, how do you be consistent? Like I said, when you suffer, you will automatically be consistent. When you don't have a mummy, you don't have a daddy, you don't have a spouse, you don't have brother, sister, nobody helping you. You know, you feel hungry automatically, you'll cook food. Nobody will cook for you. If you're, you know, when you want to shit and you feel lazy, you will get up, others will shit yourself. So. It, it comes it comes with age and experience and priorities yeah and if you're mature enough you'll not ask this question you're still a kid that is why i'm asking about consistency um because remember this if you are a leader if you're really a made leader if you have what it takes to succeed you are not ask this question okay next one is uh, let me put a timestamp. okay uh Next one is how to do self-marketing. Well, just follow what I'm doing. I constantly put up content. I put up articles. I put up videos. I give them, I give people value. Uh, I keep adding value to people. I keep sharing information. I keep doing something or another that focuses on my target market's needs, like answering these questions. That's how I market myself. There are other ways by which you can do paid. I'm pretty sure you don't want to do paid. They you don't want to do paid, do this. Offer value, then people will constantly come to you. That is how you market yourself. By giving value first, I've been doing it for 11 years, it comes back to you. Um, you can also do creative stuff like creating groups, creating a Facebook page, uh, putting your own YouTube channel, having blogs. It's, it's pretty unlimited. So give value first, keep doing it. Followers will come automatically. Uh, last, if not the least, uh, what is preferable according to you, introvert or extrovert? Uh, I don't have a preference. Um, when I'm doing work, I'm pretty quiet. I don't like to be disturbed. Like you can see, there's no noise. My wife is an introvert and I'm very happy about it. Uh, however, when I'm marketing or selling myself, I'm a classic extrovert. So it all depends. End of the day, it has to achieve a purpose. My wife is an introvert. I'm an extrovert. She likes to be reserved. I like to be uh, public only when I'm doing my work. Otherwise, I switch off. I'm very quiet. I like to be myself. So there's no particular preference that I like, introvert or extrovert. 
but you need to be the right person at the right time at the right place. So I hope this, uh, these questions are answered. If you have any questions, log in the cedar.com. If you'd like to join my WhatsApp group, the information is given down below. This is me answering your questions uh, to the guys who send me the questions. Amal Das from Kerala, Rohan Shetty from Bengala, Bangalore, man, come on, uh, Bengala Okay, Ayush Tomar from New Delhi and the people who didn't want their names to be answered. Thank you very much for these questions. This is, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't like it, give it a thumbs down. This is me signing off for now. Take care. Bye.